Hi everyone, welcome back to this video series on getting started with Ableton Live Lite. So in the first video, I showed you how to set everything up as well as giving you a quick tour of the different areas in Live. Now it's time to start making some music. In this video, we're gonna lay down the foundations of a track by programming a drum beat and introducing a few tricks and tips along the way. So let's get into it. Okay, so you can see here in the tracks area, we have two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks by default. So we're gonna look for some drum sounds. So let's go over to the browser, click on drums, and we can actually audition these kits to see what they sound like. I quite like that one, that's called Driller Kit. So how do we actually use that kit to program a beat? There's a couple of ways we can do this. We can either double click on it and it will load into the track that's selected here. Let's just try that. There we go. Um, or you can actually drag that onto the track as well. There we go. And what we can see here is something called a drum rack and we can just click on these sounds here to hear what they sound like. So on the tracks, you can see these spaces here are called clips. And this is where we can actually record in some MIDI information and loop it. So we're gonna record one into this first clip here. And I'm just gonna create a blank clip just by double clicking. And you can see that it shows this clip view here. And then all the drum sounds are listed on the left hand side. Now, if I click on this little button here, this is called the MIDI editor preview button. And what that will allow us to do is just click on the little keyboard there and listen to the sounds. So I'm just gonna open this up a little bit to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. And we're actually gonna draw some of these sounds in. So let's start with a kick drum and we're gonna go for a, a very simple house pattern. So let's draw in a pattern using the grid here. So I'm gonna use the pencil tool and we can access this just by pressing B and you can see the cursor turns into a pencil. We can also control click and we can turn draw mode on there as well. So let's just put in a very simple kick pattern. So that's coming on every beat of the bar. And you can now press play on this clip and it will play as a one bar loop. So now let's try adding a clap sound. So let's just play that again. And I'm gonna put that on beat two and four. And now let's try our hi-hat, and that's gonna be on the offbeat. So that's one method of creating a pattern. We can also actually use a keyboard or even our QWERTY keyboard to play sounds over the top live. So this is currently a one bar loop. I'm gonna click on this button here, duplicate, and then that's gonna turn it into a two bar loop. So you can see it's copied over everything I've just programmed in. I'm gonna press B again to get out of the draw mode. And this button here turns on or off the computer MIDI keyboard. And you can see it's actually turned on at the moment. So what I can do is use these keys here to actually play the sounds. Now there's nothing coming out at the moment. That's because I need to change the octave. If I press the key here, you can see that it's lighting up yellow there, but I need to put it down to two octaves so that actually plays something. And Z and X change the octave. There we go, let's put it down one more. Okay, so let's play the clip and we can jam something over the top of it. And note that we can actually switch between the clip view and the device view just by clicking here. So I'm gonna play along, come up with some ideas, and then when I'm ready, I'm gonna click on this button here, which is the session record button, and this will overdub onto this MIDI clip what I've just played. So let's just press play now. I quite like that, so let's just hit this now and we can record it in. So when I was drawing in those drum sounds, it was snapping them automatically to the grid, whereas just playing it in live, it means it might not be in time. And if we just zoom in with our mouse here, you can see that it's not completely lined up to the grid. 
So there's a function in Ableton Live called Quantize. And this will actually put anything that we've played in time for us. So if we go up to the edit menu here and go to Quantize Settings, and this is where we can determine what type of quantize we want. We're going to make this to the current grid. Click on OK. And you can see that it's actually just quantized it for us. And once we've set our quantize settings, we can just go to quantize anytime and it will quantize it for us. Um, or there's a key command, which is command U, and that will put it in time. When using keyboard shortcuts with Windows, just use control instead of command, for example. There's a link in the description for a full comparison of Windows and Mac shortcuts. OK, so let's listen to that now. OK, now another thing I want to do is to give this a bit more of a feel, and I'm going to add some swing to do this. So if we go over to the browser menu here and just click on Grooves, this is where we can choose which groove we want. I'm going to choose this one here, which is Swing 16th 73, and I'm just going to double click on that, and that's going to put that into something called the Groove Pool. Now, once this is in the Groove Pool, I can then apply this swing or this groove to any of the clips that I'm working on. And we can just do this from the Clip Groove setting in the Clip View here. So there you go, it's appeared. I'm going to turn it on. Now let's play it. Now you can see it's very, very heavily swung. But over here we have the global groove amount, so we can actually tone this down so it's not swinging quite so much. And the advantage of this is that we can apply this groove to any of the clips, so they all have the same groove setting. OK, so we've got our first clip, I'm happy with that. So now what I want to do is to create some variations of this beat. And what I can actually do is to duplicate this clip to the next clip slot. And I can just do this by pressing Command D, and you can see that it creates an exact copy of that clip. So what I'm going to do with this clip, I'm just going to change the hi-hat pattern so that it's playing 16th notes. So I'm just going to select all of those previous hi-hats I put in, press Delete, and then I'm going to press B to bring back the pencil tool. And if I hold down Option, and just drag this across the grid. You can see it's created 16th notes. Now the reason I pressed Option was to make sure that it just stayed on that note. If I didn't, then it's going to move around, which is not what we want. So let's just delete those, and let's just play the clip and listen to what it sounds like. And you can see that because I duplicated that clip, it's also applied that groove to that clip as well. Now I can actually switch between these two clips. Now the great thing about Session View are the horizontal lines, and these are called scenes. And it means we can actually build up an arrangement or structure of our track by triggering them. And we can do that from the master track just by clicking on play, and then any clips that are in that scene will be triggered. OK, so we're going to create one final variation of this beat. So this time I'm going to duplicate the clip in a different way. I'm actually just going to hold down Option and then drag it onto that third clip slot. Now for this beat, I actually want to change the clip back to a one bar loop. So what I can do is just go to the loop brace, change it back to one bar, and I'm going to press Control and I'm actually going to crop the clip, and that's just going to get rid of that second bar and just make it one bar again. OK, so let's just reprogram the hi-hats. Just going to select the hi-hats and those rims as well. And let's program a bit more of a syncopated rhythm. So I'm just going to draw in these notes. And then let's listen to that. Great, and let's try putting in an extra snare here. Let's put in this sound. Great, okay, so we've got three patterns. Let's just quickly play them through again.
Now we're going to look at mixing and balancing our sounds in a later video, but I just want to show you how we can quickly do that with this drum kit. So if I just click on this triangle here, um, and then again there, this is where we can see the levels of all our drum sounds. Now I want to take this snare down a little bit, it's a little bit loud. Maybe this clap as well. Now a really important thing to do once we've done some work is to save it. So I'm going to go here to save live set. And then that's going to ask me where I want to save it to. Let's call it house beat one. Before we move on with the next video, I wanted to mention templates as these can be a great way to get inspiration and get up and running quickly. So we can go over to the template section in the browser here and try this one, demo and sketch. And we have a whole range of different styles. We've got slow rock, straight rock, pop, grunge rock, uh, reggaeton, classic disco. And if we click on the master tracks here, it's gonna choose the appropriate tempo for us. So let's just click on reggaeton, for example. Go to classic disco. And what's more, if we click on the track, we can actually change the drum kit as well that's being played. So let's try an 808 kit. 909. Great, and then there are some other tracks set up here, which are some keyboard sounds. And some bass sounds. And this is where you can record some vocals as well. So I thoroughly recommend checking out that to get some inspiration and get you started on a track. Okay, cool. So we've got our first part down. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to add a bass line to go with the beat along with a few MIDI editing tricks.